Welcome back, Tangerines. If you're new to our channel, my name is Maddie, this is Jordan, and we are Tangerine Travels. We've been traveling through Mexico for going on two years now, traveling and living in Mexico mm -hmm. across the country. And over time, we've realized that there are some things that we really prefer about our life in Mexico over our former life in the US. Yeah, but almost a year ago, we made a video of this, part one. And although we covered a lot of things in that video, there's things we've learned since then, and also things we forgot to mention. Yeah, that's one of the great things about travel the more you do it, the more you learn about yourself, about other people. I mean, heck, that's why we're still on this big grand adventure. Yeah, so today we're in Puerto Morelos and we're going to be running some errands, taking you along with us and telling you all about this kind of thing. Alaska, do you like the car ride? And in case you didn't see the last video that we posted on this topic, we're going to recap a few of the things that we mentioned in there, but if by the end of this video you're like, I cannot believe they didn't mention this, well, it's probably in that video, so we recommend watching that once you're done with this one. Yeah, so some of the things we mentioned were that it's less materialistic, the cost of living, the diverse nature across Mexico. And some things regarding like the culture here and the way people act, like not being on their phones all the time when people are hanging out. Our first errand of the day is not on this list, but it is a big perk of living in Mexico, and that is the full service laundry here. You can get your laundry washed and dried and nicely folded for you all for a reasonable price. So we're on our way to drop off our laundry. Stay, stay. The first one on our list is something I'm surprised we didn't mention in the first video that we made on this topic, but it's that we're in very close proximity to the US. So that's a huge benefit of living in Mexico is that no matter where you are in the country, it's a relatively short flight to get back to the US. In some places, it's not too far of a drive. So that's a huge benefit. We can go back and visit our families across the country and it's not a overnight flight like it is from the US to Europe or Mexico to Europe. Yeah, you really like this lavanderia because it's basically your last name without any. <laughs> <laughs> so it was about 34 pounds of laundry, and our total is 195 pesos. Tomorrow it's going to be ready for us tomorrow evening, and they're gonna wash it, they're gonna dry it, they're gonna fold it neatly, and bundle it up for us. It is the cutest thing ever when we're driving around Centro of Puerto Morelos. We've encouraged Alaska to be like. <laughs> <laughs> We've encouraged Alaska to be like rah, 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 to the people around here. And she talks to everyone. She talks to everyone and makes everyone laugh, so you guys need to watch this. <laughs> Alaska. Let's go get some breakfast. Hola. Hola, gracias. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Hola, Alaska. Alaska querida, salúdame. Saluda. Ven acá. Ven acá. Salúdame. ¿Cómo estás? You always get so happy to see her. You just go right back. Will you keep it on? Yes. So we're recording. Come on over. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> So we're recording a video today, uh, uh -huh. but this is Yvette, the owner of hi, Loli Moya. Hi, nice to meet you everyone. <laughs> and she just moved into this new place. She has a really, really cool stuff going on inside there. It's just down the street from her old restaurant. Jordan, you say cool stuff. Cool stuff though, it's it's way more than cool stuff, I think. We've got, these are from, you said Nayarit? Nayarit, yeah. These They're are made by um, ethnic people. We show people. Okay. So yeah, we got them all the way great. from there. Amazing. And thank you. We'll have to show you guys the incredible mural that's going up inside. And let's not even get started on the food. Actually, yes, let's get started on the food. I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. But without further delay, why else do we prefer our lives in Mexico over our lives in the U.S.? So the U.S. is one of two countries in the world that taxes its citizens regardless of where on earth you live. But one thing you can do is if you live outside of the country for a certain period of time, well then you get a tax deduction on about your first $110,000 in income. You still have to pay uh, what they call self-employment tax, assuming 
you're set up as a self proprietor for your businesses. So that's 16% taxes, which includes Social Security and Medicare. But to sum it up, you get big tax savings if you live outside of the U.S. If you guys are coming to Puerto Morelos, I highly recommend Lola y Moya, not only for the food, but I think this is the best coffee in town. I get this iced latte every single time I come, and it never disappoints. If you like bananas, try the banana coffee. It's delicious. The next reason we have is cost of travel. We mentioned cost of living in our last video, and of course that's many people's reason why they want to come to Mexico, because it's much cheaper than living in the U.S., or definitely cheaper than living in Europe, but travel is also much cheaper within the country. With the caveat that we're talking about plane travel or by bus, bus um, even taxis, like taking taxis is significantly cheaper. <laughs> Where travel in Mexico is not cheaper is if you're driving a car like we are because you're still having to pay for registration back in the U.S. I, to our understanding, you have to have U.S. insurance as well as Mexico insurance. You're also paying for gas, which is more expensive than the U.S., tolls across the country, maintenance, of course, like there are a lot of costs and they add up. So the great thing is you can travel by bus, you can travel by plane, and the tickets within Mexico are dirt cheap. Travel is also cheaper once you get to your destination. So you're going to be spending way less than if you were going to another U.S. city. So what'd you get? Um, like always, like every time we come here, three, four to five times a week, I get enchiladas verdes because the green sauce is amazeballs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the green sauce is so good. I get something that doesn't come with it, but I ask for it every time because it makes it so much better. <laughs> And you get it with egg, mm -hmm. which is interesting, like breakfast enchiladas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I've always considered enchiladas a dinner food, but in Mexico they're always on the breakfast menu. And as we were driving to breakfast, we realized we never updated you guys on what happened with the car battery situation. And if you didn't see that video, basically we went for a regular maintenance at a Toyota dealership in Cancun and they told us the secondary battery, not the hybrid battery, was going bad. And that's the one that starts the car. And although Prius Cs exist in Mexico, the configurations for some of the parts are different between Mexico and the United States. So they couldn't use one of those batteries that they have for my car. And they let us know that it would be impossible for them to order one. I'm not sure why <laughs> they yeah. told us that at the time. I would think you'd be able to go to a Toyota dealership anywhere in the world and get your battery replaced. Because it wasn't like an authorized retailer. It's like straight up a Toyota dealership. So we mentioned this in a video. Tons of people reached out to help us out with this so that we didn't have to drive all the way from Quintana Roo back to like Texas or something to a U.S. Toyota dealership. And all the solutions were complicated to say the least. But after we mentioned that in a video, the most miraculous thing happened. The Toyota dealership reached back out to us and what was formerly impossible was now possible for some reason. They yeah, so we don't, we don't know if uh, someone from corporate or something with some power there saw our video and was like hey guys figure this out or if a bunch of people called the dealership and they're like okay we need to figure this out because they sent their army <laughs> which we didn't we didn't ask anyone to call or do anything but thank you guys thank you to everyone who helped who called dealerships all across mexico it's amazing because we really did not want to have to drive that i mean 45 50 60 70 hour drive back to the u.s to get a battery on a battery that was bad so ultimately we went back to the dealership they put the new one in that they somehow mysteriously got the correct one for my car and it was free i was truly afraid to ask why it was free or like what happened exactly in case it was like oh this was a mistake this is five thousand uh, dollars it wouldn't be that much but so that's the solution it was yeah. free so our Got a battery fixed. hooray we won't be stranded in the desert somewhere the next reason that we have is that Mexicans are very accepting of foreigners. Before traveling through the country, I had a little bit of a thought that maybe Mexicans would have some type of animosity towards us, especially as people coming from the US because of the political environment and because of the fact that it's kind of not the same when Mexicans come to the US. I think many mm -hmm. people, not everyone, but many people have this like, learn to speak English or like there's these people invading or you know, something like mm -hmm. that. But it's not that it's not that way in Mexico. People are welcoming, hospitable, patient when it comes to us and our 
terrible butchering of Spanish sometimes. <laughs> like we are doing our best to learn the language, but people are so patient with that. No one has ever said um, like learn to speak Spanish or like they haven't gotten frustrated, mm -hmm. which I think is such a, it's just one, one great feature or one great personality trait that many Mexicans have. Contrasting that to when we went to Peru, uh, when we went to Peru, like our interactions with people were fine. We didn't feel like that. But we yeah, made, I never, I never got the impression that people didn't like us there necessarily. Yeah, but we made two videos there, and in the comments, people were so mean. We've never turned yeah. off comments on a video, but we almost did on those videos because it was just one after another of mean comments. And like some of the worst comments we've ever gotten on our channel to date were on those two videos. In Peru, we tried tons of typical food and of course we couldn't try everything. We were only there for like a week, but mm -hmm. um, we tried food, we tried to experience the culture just like we do in Mexico. And whatever we did, it was wrong. Uh, to Peruvians who were commenting, it was the wrong typical food that we tried, the wrong place, the wrong price, the wrong time of year. It was all wrong. <laughs> Whereas in Mexico, we go, I, I get the impression that Mexicans are just happy that we're trying to experience their culture and eat the food and learn more about it. And yeah. when we do try something, they'll be like, oh, if you like this, then you should go here or you should try this. And we always feel like we're welcomed mm -hmm. in the culture here. And then it's like, oh, you did this. Next time you come back, you should do this. Like really positive and helpful and I, I really appreciate that and I yeah, think that's too. one of the big reasons why we've stayed here among the many many others. Mm -hmm. My hair is getting so long I need a haircut really badly so we found this place where I'm going to try to get that done and something along the same lines as the last one we just mentioned where foreigners are very welcomed in our everyday lives or us as foreigners are welcomed in our everyday lives also Mexico's immigration policies are very friendly as well. If you have a U.S. passport and you look up what countries you can go to visa-free, most of them you're going to get 30, 60, if you're lucky, maybe 90 days in the country. And I don't know if there's a single other country that'll give you 180 days visa-free upon arrival. So Mexico, you get here, they uh, write 180 on the little slip of paper you get, that's, you get 180 days in the country, and then you can do it over again if you leave. So, super friendly towards foreigners, not only in your everyday life, but also in terms of immigration. Hola, ¿cómo está? No te hablan en este inglés, they say rap music. ¿Qué ganas? The bad words first. So, this place is called La Barrería del Puerto. I can't say that. How do you say it? Barberia. 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 I'm gonna have to work on that one. <laughs> but his name's Franco. I think he did a really good job. This is probably the best haircut I've gotten in town, so I'm very happy with it. And it's a great location over on the beach side here. Another reason why we live in Mexico and not in the United States is that today's digital world allows us to. And if we were trying this, uh, 20 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, we probably would have had a much more difficult time working abroad, working online. But now that we can work online, we have that location freedom that allows us to live pretty much anywhere with an internet connection. Another reason that I personally am glad that we're living in Mexico and not the United States is that there is one of the biggest political divides right now like the political environment is so tense in the u.s you can't even say the name of the, the current president he who shall not be named on our channel because if you even say the name people jump to conclusions about whether you support or don't support and what your beliefs are that's why jordan and i remain totally apolitical on this channel and in, in life in too. life in general i just i want to stay out of it when it comes to politics and it's uncomfortable like at the last election i knew people who lost friends who now don't talk to family members over <laughs> like it's just insane over the current president and political beliefs so i'm glad we're living in mexico so we don't have to deal with that and i'm sure if we were mexicans uh, there would be the same type of thing because politics are very dividing, but I'm glad that we can just stay the heck out of it Like mm -hmm. we're not in the country. I don't have to I don't have to listen to that stuff I don't have to hear about campaigning. It's just 
we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> now that we're coming on to election season pretty soon here, if you see political ads on our videos, we don't get to choose what ads go on there. That's YouTube and Google. We've had people unsubscribe because they didn't like the ads we were serving them, but we have nothing to do with it. Next reason why we live in Mexico and not in the US. I'm personally a bit of an economics nerd, and I don't like where the US economy is headed. It seems like no matter who's in charge, every year the national debt increase and the yearly deficits increase. And with my knowledge of history, when a country has this much debt and the US is the most indebted nation in the history of the world, it doesn't end well. So I think we're serving ourselves well to kind of internationalize ourselves, become familiar with another culture, become familiar with another language, and be able to build a business that allows us to be anywhere and just be pretty much more mobile. Along these same lines, without delving into a very complicated subject too much, I think the dollar is going to lose its status as the world's reserve currency, and if I'm right, the dollar of the value <laughs> the dollar of the value. The value of the dollar is going to decrease a lot, which could create a lot of social unrest and instability in the US, in which case it would be good to be elsewhere. And speaking of internationalizing yourself, one of the best ways you can do that is by learning the language. And for us, Spanish seemed like the logical choice before we had even really made the decision to travel in Mexico, because there are so many Spanish-speaking countries that we could have chosen from. Mexico just happened to win our hearts over once we started traveling here. But if you want to learn Spanish so that you have the freedom to move to different countries, countries, we recommend Rocket Languages. And you can sign up for a no credit card required free trial and see what you think of it and see how great of a course it is, all inclusive. So you can just head to tangerinespanish.com and that will take you right to the page on Rocket Languages where you can sign up for a free trial. If you do end up purchasing Rocket Languages, we get a portion of the sale because we're affiliates, which helps us continue producing videos just like this one. This isn't exactly a reason why we live in Mexico, not the US, but we did find out after moving here that with our airline, Delta, if we have a foreign address, it's easier to get status and get free upgrades and stuff when we're flying. And that's because some of the requirements of status are removed if you have a foreign address. Earlier in this video, we mentioned making videos in Peru and the comments we got on those videos. Well, we did really enjoy our time there and we are actually going back we have flights booked to Lima but this time we decided to go to Cusco instead so we're super excited for this trip coming up if you follow us on patreon or on Facebook you already know this so <laughs> wink wink uh, head over there that's the benefits of following us on social media you get other fun goodies like live videos and Instagram stories and shenanigans our but, specialty <laughs> but I'm stoked for Cusco me too I just hope we can handle the altitude because that will be the highest altitude that I have ever experienced or probably you as well, right? Yeah. That either of us have ever, ever experienced in our lives. So why else are we living in Mexico and not the US? Well, to rewind to before we were leaving the US for Mexico originally in January of 2018, there were a lot of things about society and the culture of the US that neither of us really liked. There were a lot of things that I just wasn't settled with, many of which we mentioned in the last video, like we prefer living in Mexico because people aren't glued to their phone. If you go out to dinner with someone, they are present there with you to have a conversation and enjoy your company, whereas that's not the case in the US. But another aspect of society that's changed over the very recent past is that the US is becoming so rooted in fear and trying to, the powers that be, media, social media, the news, government, whatever, trying to make you afraid of things. Like, so that you are afraid of Mexico. You're afraid to say something that's not within the parameters of the allowable opinion, opinions, the political correctness. You're afraid to say the president's name or, you know, endure the wrath of people who, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, I won't even go there right now just on that topic. I don't, like, we won't say the <laughs> name because it's too, too... Polarizing? Polarizing, yeah. But the whole society is becoming fear-based, and I think that's a really dangerous dynamic because when people are afraid of whatever, like, 
shootings, for instance. Mm -hmm. They'll give up almost everything. They'll give up everything. You're inclined to give up your freedoms and just, just out of fear because you want to be safe. So you'll sell your soul to the devil essentially for that safety or even a false sense of safety. So I think that's a very dangerous dynamic. Speaking of safety and danger, <laughs> dangerous dynamic. And yeah, that's very well said. <laughs> I'll do what I can. <laughs> <laughs> so along the same lines of fear, the U.S. seems to be headed in a long. S <laughs> the U.S. seems to be headed in an unsafe direction. Like just 20 years ago, you didn't see mass shootings. Now they're happening all the time. This kind of reminds me of what we were talking about when it comes to food in the in part one of this video. Mm -hmm. That we don't know what it is, but lots of people are intolerant to the food. And developing food allergies that didn't exist 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Yeah, and it's becoming rampant throughout society. And, and I, was, I was one of those people. My health was mm -hmm. in shambles when we were leaving the US, which we talked about at length in that other video, so I won't dwell on it too much here. But I could hardly eat anything because my body was rejecting everything I put in my mouth and causing a reaction. Then we come here to mm -hmm. Mexico and all of a sudden I can eat like normal foods again, as in fruits and vegetables and grains and legumes and all that good stuff without having these reactions. Mm -hmm. Even to this day, I go back to the US and if I'm there for more than, I'd say like a week maybe, uh -huh. I'll start getting a lot of those reactions again. And that's with eating organic when I can and trying to go natural and not, not processed. Yeah, so we were saying in that video that something about the food is messed up. Like, we don't yeah, know what it is, it is, but there's something that's messed up. Well, with all these shootings, there's something that's messed up. Like for them to be happening all the time, what mm -hmm. the heck happened to society that went from there not being any to happening all the time, so. Yeah, there's something fishy with that and we can speculate as to what that might be, but I mean, it's it's, it's just just one of trending those things, in a scary like, direction. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case in Mexico. So on both of these point points, I can eat the food here. It's more natural. It vibes better with my body compared to the U.S. And you, I mean, there are dangers in Mexico, which we talked about in our last video. Was it? Uh, I don't know. These all run <laughs> together to <for> these days. <laughs> we'll link that right here, ish. Um, there are dangers here, but I I don't think there is like ri like random and widespread acts of violence acts of violence that just pop up out of nowhere for no reason. Alaska, what do you like about living in Mexico? Taking naps. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, surprise, we're back at Blue Morelos because they want us over with these delicious mezcal mm -hmm. margaritas. <laughs> and the food is pretty good too. Their chicken paprika yeah. tacos are like, mm, they've got a fresh garlic in there. Can't, can't resist that. I really like the food here too. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. good. And they even have one. I, we, if we could be so cool this day, if we could be <laughs> so cool as this one day, there's a taco on here called the Trisha taco which is Trisha, as in my Trisha advisor, Trisha. She also has a burger named after her yeah, at Burger, burger Underground. Underground. Like- I don't know how she does this. Trisha, but... tell, tell, what are your secrets? That is so <laughs> cool. I want tangerine taco. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. But actually, this leads us into the next reason why we love living in Mexico and prefer it over the US, really, because of the food and the food culture. All the different regions that we visit in Mexico, and even within states, and even within states, like cities within states, the food culture is so complex and has lots of history to it. And honestly, before coming to Mexico, I knew I was going to like Mexican food because I knew I liked tacos and I knew I liked burritos, and quesadillas are pretty good too. But the true Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> but I quickly found out that that's far from the complete list of Mexican foods. That's just really like scratching the surface, if it's even actually the surface of Mexican yeah, food. Totally. But the more we travel and the more stuff that we try, it's just, it like blows my mind constantly. Just when we were back in Oaxaca, we tried, uh, was it Tejate? Yeah. That's called Tejate. And that's something that's, that's a drink um, that's been, not developed. Um, I would say developed. Or it's been around for a long time. Yeah, been around for a really long time. It passed from the indigenous people to and integrated into the Mexican culture. And I mean, the, there's a little bit of that in the U.S., but the U.S. is young. 
compared to Mexico in many ways. Very, and I uh, think in the food, in the food culture, especially. And so I feel very lucky to be traveling through this country and having the opportunity to try all these, to us, sometimes strange things, but awesome all the same. I feel like we unintentionally saved the best for last, but truly it's kind of hard to pick the best thing. Like what's the reason why we like living in Mexico over the US? There's no way, no possible way I could think of that. But there's also no way to do this one justice, and that is the history and culture of Mexico. And that's everything from like what, the, the ancient ruins, the indigenous culture, and traditions, how that's, traditions holidays, um, parades, and festivals and uh -huh. traditional dances and of course the food that that um, is a huge part of the culture but I just didn't have that growing up in Arizona which of the US is one of the youngest states used to be Mexico also um, there's just there's not typical food there there's not traditional styles of dance like the traditions are borrowed traditions in the culture uh -huh. which is okay and that's often how traditions and customs come about but it's so I remember looking up uh, foods that were traditional of Arizona yeah that was, <laughs> it was hilarious. like salsa salsa <laughs> cheese crisps if you're from Arizona that actually is a pretty typical Arizonan <laughs> food but <laughs> it's funny salsa and like some now Chimichanga. Soup. Chimichanga, yeah. That's <laughs> something we've never seen in Mexico. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I, I, I vastly prefer Mexico in all of these departments because there's just, it's vibrant and rich and filled with just, it's hard to put into words. Mm -hmm. Have we even mentioned the people in this video? No. How? Please, please hold, please hold. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> And we could not end this video without mentioning mentioning the people of Mexico. This is one of the best things about living here is that we're surrounded by some of the most hardworking people that I've ever experienced in my entire life. They're also loving, helpful, kind, welcoming, hospitable, and just, I mean, we could list off 20 or 30 traits, great traits that the vast majority of Mexicans have. So I feel so lucky to be around people like this who your your example you're saying people will just invite you into their home after knowing you for five minutes and it you're just part of the family after that so here's an example of how Mexicans generally just go above and beyond to try to be helpful and uh, make you feel more comfortable in the country one time we were trying to order gas for our house and we're calling into this automated system to order it and we couldn't understand hardly a word of it. We were calling over and over and over trying to understand one or two more words each time that we called. It was so frustrating. It was so hard to hear over the phone and it's just like the robot voice of the automated system. So finally we contacted our neighbor at the time and we were like, hey, can you please help us order this? We cannot figure it out. And without us asking him to do this, he took it upon himself to call in, order it, set up the appointment and get them to come out for us just because we were and like- he came over. It, oh yeah, and he even came over to make sure that it all went smoothly. So that's the type of thing that happens on a very regular basis here in Mexico. So the people for sure are one yeah. of the biggest reasons why we prefer for living in Mexico over the US. Before you guys go, please check out the end screen where we link part one of this video. And if you enjoy our videos, please subscribe to our channel because we release videos just about every week about our travels through Mexico and around the world. Oh, oh one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> that bell so you are the first to be notified the next time we release a new video. And we'll see you soon.